Did you know Marina Bay Sands isn't even finished yet? Yep. For more than a decade, it's dominated Singapore's skyline like something beamed in straight from the future. But now, Singapore is building something new. A fourth tower, taller, rotated, capped with a double-layer sky park, and anchored by a 15,000-seat arena designed by the same team behind the Las Vegas sphere. Singapore didn't just say, let's expand. Singapore said, let's upgrade the sci-fi megastructure we already built and make it even crazier. But to understand why Singapore is expanding Marina Bay Sands, you first have to understand what it took to build the original. Because Marina Bay Sands wasn't just another fancy resort, it was an impossible idea. One that required engineers to defy gravity, tame unstable reclaimed land, and connect three skyscrapers with a massive bridge in the sky. You know, normal stuff. And the story behind all of that is absolutely wild. So grab a drink, hit that like button if you love insane engineering, and let's break down how Singapore built the impossible and why it's not done yet. Let's rewind to the early 2000s. Singapore was already a global success story, efficient, wealthy, organized like a city run by spreadsheets. But for all its prosperity, it lacked one thing, a signature landmark, something instantly identifiable, something that could stand in the same league as the Eiffel Tower, the Sydney Opera House, or the Burj Khalifa, a structure that made the world look up and say, ah, that's Singapore. So in 2005, the government launched an international design competition for a world-class integrated resort at Marina Bay, a brand new district created on reclaimed land at the mouth of the Singapore River. The location, absolutely prime. The ground beneath it, absolutely terrible. But we'll get to that in a second. The winning proposal came from Las Vegas Sands, led by architect Moshe Safti, a man known for big, bold concepts that blend geometry with storytelling. His idea wasn't just a hotel. It was an architectural event. Three 55-story towers, leaning inward, crowned by a sky park shaped like a giant surfboard floating in the clouds. He called it urban theater. And honestly, it fits. Because Marina Bay Sands doesn't just sit in Singapore's skyline, it performs in it. But before Safdie's vision could become reality, engineers had to face a massive issue. Marina Bay itself had been ocean just decades earlier. The land was reclaimed using layers of sand and soft marine clay. And that clay was weak, compressible, and absolutely not the kind of material you want underneath three leaning skyscrapers. Imagine trying to build a skyscraper on a half-set pudding cup. That's the vibe. To fix that, engineers drilled more than 5,000 reinforced concrete piles, some plunging 50 meters deep, until they reached solid bedrock. This was one of the largest piling operations in Singapore's history. Beneath Marina Bay Sands is a hidden forest of concrete pillars so extensive you could practically build a smaller city down there. But that foundation was the only way to keep the entire structure from sinking or leaning the wrong direction. Once the foundations were secured, construction shifted above ground. And this is where the architecture gets bold. To create the sweeping curves Safdi imagined, the towers weren't built straight. They lean inward by up to 26 degrees. For context, the leaning tower of Pisa tilts by only about 4 degrees. Marina Bay Sands didn't accidentally lean. It was designed to lean more, but leaning towers create enormous sideways forces that twist the cores and push the building in ways skyscrapers aren't usually designed to handle. To fight that, each tower was built around a huge reinforced concrete spine, a 71 centimeter thick shear wall running the full height of the building. Steel trusses at key floors tie everything together, making the towers behave like one solid unit instead of three separate structures wobbling independently. And because the Sky Park would eventually have to sit perfectly across the three towers, engineers used laser surveying equipment constantly during construction. The margin for error? Just a few millimeters. If the towers ended up even slightly off, the Sky Park wouldn't fit. Imagine spending billions of dollars and then discovering the roof doesn't line up. Yeah, no pressure. But the real challenge, the part of the project that made engineers sweat, was lifting the Sky Park itself. This is a 340 meter long structure weighing over 7,000 tons. You can't just crane this thing up like you're lifting a roof panel. You need bridge engineering. 
at 200 meters in the air. So they divided the Sky Park into 14 giant steel sections, each between 500 and 1,000 tons. These were assembled at ground level, transported across the bay on barges, and then lifted by strand jacks mounted on temporary lifting towers. These lifts took days. Engineers monitored every millimeter in real time. A gust of wind could ruin the alignment. A temperature change could warp the steel. If you want to imagine the stress, picture stacking Lego pieces 200 meters high using a robotic claw machine while someone gently blows on it every few seconds. Piece by piece, the Sky Park assembled like a giant floating puzzle. And when it was finally complete, it stretched across all three towers like a steel bridge in the sky. At the west end, the platform extends 67 meters beyond the last tower, creating the world's largest public cantilever. Standing there feels like you're suspended over the city, hanging in space. And it gets crazier. Even after the Sky Park was installed, it couldn't just sit there. The towers beneath it move. They sway in the wind. They expand in the heat and contract in the cold. Some days, the towers can shift up to 20 millimeters apart. So engineers added over 500 hydraulic jacking points underneath the Sky Park, allowing it to adjust and flex with the towers. Beneath the cantilever, they installed a five-ton tuned mass damper, a giant weight that moves opposite to vibrations to keep the whole thing stable. The Sky Park isn't a static structure. It's alive, it breathes, it moves, and nothing symbolizes that more than the infinity pool, the longest elevated pool on Earth. You've seen the pictures, a 150-meter pool perched at the edge of the world, water blending into the skyline like the edge of reality. But the engineering behind it is wild. The pool is divided into three separate segments, each with its own expansion joints so it can move with the shifting sky park. Millions of liters of water flow through advanced pumps and filtration systems, constantly adjusting to wind, temperature, and load. And yet, when you're in it, it feels effortless like you're floating above the city, because you literally are. Below the Sky Park, Marina Bay Sands spreads across 845,000 square meters, an entire city packed into one building, over 2,500 hotel rooms, two massive theaters, a luxury mall with indoor canals, the lotus-shaped Art Science Museum, and the world's largest atrium casino with more than 1,600 slot machines and 500 tables. This wasn't just a hotel. It was a statement. Singapore wasn't playing around. And yet, Marina Bay Sands almost didn't make it to the finish line. When the global financial crisis hit in 2008, massive construction projects around the world collapsed overnight. For a while, Marina Bay Sands was hanging by a thread, but Singapore didn't flinch. The government saw the resort not as a luxury, but as an investment, a symbol of confidence during a global downturn. Construction continued. Two years later, in 2010, Marina Bay Sands opened at a final cost of $5.5 billion and quickly became one of the most profitable casino resorts ever built. It transformed Singapore into a global tourism powerhouse. And now, the next chapter is rising. Beside the original three towers, a fourth tower is on the way, rotated 45 degrees to catch the sunlight differently, rising 55 stories with a dual-level sky park, lush gardens, and new wellness spaces overlooking the city. Beneath it, a massive 15,000-seat entertainment arena designed by the Las Vegas Sphere team, meaning Singapore is about to have one of the most advanced performance venues on the planet. Originally budgeted at $3.3 billion, the expansion has nearly doubled to about $8 billion. But honestly, that feels right. Marina Bay Sands has never been about the safe choice. It's been about doing what other cities wouldn't dare to do. Building the impossible, then doing it again. From sand pulled out of the ocean to steel lifted into the sky, Marina Bay Sands is more than a building. It's a flex, a message, a glowing billboard telling the world that when Singapore dreams big enough, even gravity steps aside. And as night falls and the sky park lights up above the bay, the towers stand as a reminder that the future isn't built by playing it safe. It's built by taking risks, pushing boundaries, and refusing to believe that anything is impossible. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button, subscribe for more insane mega project stories, and drop a comment. Would you stay in the new fourth tower when it opens?